Hey everyone, it's Ted. Today, um, I'm gonna be painting some trolls today. These are Re Reaper trolls. So I'll be I'm using contrast, and I'm gonna be starting with um, gut ripper flesh. This is one of the new ones. I'm just trying to get the the pigment. It's really really bopping about, so I put an agitator in there. They got this is going to be for their midsection and. The palms of their hands and stuff. We'll do the light first. And I think I do want using the new Mantis Wear green contrast for the rest, rest of the flat. Not gonna be I might act do a little bit darker on the back and stuff like that too. But yep, there you go. Now you can see as I, I got the pigment off now the pigment's all nice and mixed up in the there's one thing I make sure you gotta make sure you get that pigment off the bottom and Mixed up. That's why the um, agitators come in nice. So start with this one, and I I, I did did a zenith highlighting on these. So basically, just like the rest, the bottoms painted black, and I sprayed at an angle with white paint onto them. So the bot areas down here is gonna be darker than what's up. So. Yeah, the contrast has, doesn't work very good on black. It's really good on white. But it does kind of work out. Because it does make make it darker and stuff. The palms in their hands and the inside of their hands. It's like that. Let's right, do the... Get this midsection all done. There we go. And one with a pot belly. Not much you can see, but there is some areas at his neck. Maybe a little around the sides. But his, and his hands are closed too. So don't worry about that now. We're gonna go with uh, the mantis warrior green. So I haven't haven't used this color yet. So I need to put one in here. And shake. See if we get get the pigment all nice and stirred up. So I'm going to paint this basically over the entire bot. The entire, his entire bot, body is going to be painted this, this green. So I'll go ahead and paint this and I'll be right back. All right. Got the green all on them. So I'm going to go for the hair now. I'm going to use um, Aldari Admiral. Uh, green for the hair. It looks kind of like seaweed. So go through and get all the hair. There we go. So I'm getting the hair all done. So I'll go through and finish this up. I'll be right. All right. So I did the stone there. I, put, I just used gray. Put some stone there, and I used filled in some loincloth with some red and pale there just to finish it off. But I say you can use any color you want. So basically, it's all done now. I was, but on the, the turtle shell is still dry. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put 
some designs on there too. Um, so basically, almost everything left I need to do is black. Just paint black on it. So I'm going to paint black on there, and I'll show you once I'm back. All right. So I got all the black painted on them. Did their nails and their toes, the toenails. There, so. so now that I have to go back through and find st stuff I mix. Now I'm gonna use I'm gonna be using some rugger paints for I uh, like his his skirt has been sewn or thread marked, so I'm just gonna go through them. Pick up the those and the easiest way to do is just lay it down and, dra and drag your paintbrush over just kind of let it float over the top that picks them all up so since I got this out I'm just going to double check everyone else Make sure I didn't miss anything. All right. Well, all that stuff is drying. I'm going to go for their, their mouth. Um, I'm going to use some uh, I'm going to use some yellow for their teeth. This is this golden yellow by Monolith, but 80 yellow will work. Make them yellow because they're nice and rotten. Okay, got the teeth. Now for the mouth, I, I'm going to use some more white again because I want, I want. Right now it's dark, and I, I'm just going to light that up with the white in their mouth. So I think he's the only one that actually needs it. Yep. So I'll just let that dry. I'm going to use some of this dark because go in front. Of, all right, just get the ropes and the ties on the on the front of his loincloth. We got his bones and stuff; they're tied. So I'll run some brown down that for for the tie. So now, while that's dry, I look at their skin. They got areas, and I just want that to be different colors. Um, so I'm gonna go with. So Magus Purple. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna thin it. Make almost a wash out of it. Just kinda over his is there just make it kind of discolored. And say if it's too thin, just adds more to it. But it's a little bit more. There we go. A little discoloring uh, over areas. I don't know if it's design or just imp imperfections in the in the model, but as this. There we go. Go back. His arms. He yes. So let me get his shoulder. Oh, a little of the buttocks. There we go. Oh, there's a little baboon there. And that's about all he has. This guy has some stuff on his arms. I don't know if it's supposed to be like gills or not. And the top of his hands. This way, it just breaks up. It breaks up the green a little bit. 
And this adds a little bit, some interesting colors to them. A little rough of the buttocks down there. It does a lot of sitting around. Okay. Oh, I'm going to use the Vulpris Pink for his mouth. Yeah, but he, he has a lip that's sticking out, so a little of this. A little problem for the gums and stuff. It's a little right there. All right, getting close to being completed. I said, with do it this way, it doesn't take too long. I said, even with this, this is like good. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to be putting a wash over this too. One more wash, just to tie everything together. It's going to be a diluted um. Probably agrax, but I'm going to water it down some. So, we'll get that. I think I just have to do some metal on them. You're good to go. So, he does have, they got iron and metal. So, for the metal, I'm using, I use myself, I use an AK natural steel. It's my go to uh, for, for white metal things. Really heavy in the pigment and stuff. So, because what it is, I'm gonna put this on there, then I'm gonna rust it up. Because it's been in the swamps, so it's, it's not gonna stay pretty metal, but this gives it a starting point. There we go. I think that's the only metal he has. Yeah. Has a big steel blade. Yeah, he has a steel blade and he has some armor too. So I'm just gonna get another basic color. I'm gonna do the whole knife and metal. And I'm just going to get a quick a, a wipe of metal across. I don't know if it will be a portcullis or, or like, a, like a dungeon grate. So I'm just going to take it as like a dungeon grate he got somewhere. There we go. And and that's a cooking pot. So that's, that's just going to be wrought iron up there. So I think, oop, 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 get back here. So it looks, that's about it. Look like everything else is, I just need everything else to set up uh, for, if you're going to do rusting, you can get rust colors, but you can use lots of different colors. You can use browns, uh, oranges, reds, anything like that. And you can build the colors up and stuff like that. So I'm these these are gonna be heavily rusted, so I'm gonna be using browns. So I'm just gonna use uh some I'm gonna be using regular paint for this. This is just this is dark umber. So it's heavily corroded. And all I do is just kind of Dab it on there. It depends how heavy dab it, how heavily rusted did you want. So this, so him, and since they spent so much time in water and swamps, these should be really rusted up. But I said you can still leave some of the steel showing through just to show what it what it was the basic. Yeah, even wrought iron will rust. So, but some rust.
Okay, there's the first layer of rust. So now you can go as many layers you want in different looks, uh, depending if what's built on it's acid. So I'm going to use I'm going to use a uh, light umber now. This is like a light, lighter brown. And just go on top of, top of the other brown. Doesn't take much, so this. All right, so, so let that dry a little bit. Then I'm going to really jump. I'm going to go to a red. Our orange is red. Let me see. Which is going to be burnt orange, my monolith. So this be the, the very top layer. So you can you can use any, color, any set of colors you want for rust. You just go out and look at rusted vehicles and stuff. You can see all the different ways that steel can rust it depends on what's made out of the the contents of the steel and stuff like that or what's been spilled if acid's been on it that's going to look a different than if it doesn't actually rust so there's many different layers to the rusting and stuff so it doesn't take too long for this stuff to dry so so this is the orange this is the very top layer you just go right back over what you've done let's that way, with with the different colors built up, it it does give a story to it. That, that this is it's been what it's been it's been view abused. And this I'm going a uh, swishing mode. If this is used been used to uh, chops up, it's it's going to smear. Rust a certain way, so. There's paints that you can get for corrosion and stuff. Do you ever mix a corrosion paint? There's a whole bunch of other kinds too. So it just depends on what you got, what you can get. This way, I'm just using this paints out of the drawer. There we go. Let's rust up. Oop, I did forget a couple things. Let me use a couple. Maybe back here, I forgot. I'm just going to rust those up. Make sure everything gets nice, some, some of the rust on there. So if you want to, you can just keep adding. You can go like the bright orange if you wanted to. So, but keep it more subdued. So, do one more look over here. It looks like I'm basically done. You will, as you go back around, you see. Oh, I see some white spots, but I'm I'm going to put a wash over it, and a lot of that white stuff is just going to be filled in with the wash. Let's see, oh, let's see. I, I got a little bit too shiny there, so I'm just going to, the paint's still wet. You just take some and boop, pop it right over, you're done. Yeah, basically the, the mixture itself is basically done. I'm going to add um, some effects on that. Basically, all I'm going to do Take some blending tool. Red. Can I mix it in like that? Okay. This this weapon's been used. There you go. That's a that's like that. This need to make him look a little bit more 
beam. And if you well, get into the rust effects, you can go through and it's like, so this is this is where it's been hitting things. You can shiny up the edges. So, so as you it's chopping stuff, metal on metal, it's been actually polishing itself as the two metals rub. It's been flaking that rust off. So you can do that if you want to. So there's lots of lots of little effects you can do. So the last thing I'm gonna do is their eyes. I'm gonna do some eyes on these guys. So I'm just gonna use a red. Get my really tiny and get my little beady red eyes. There you go. Beady red eyes there. There you go. Get these clean up the area a little bit. There you go. Clean that off. And far major paint's all done, so I just need to let this paint dry for a minute. Then I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some washing on it. Okay? So I'll be back in a minute. Okay everyone. Now for our, our final act, these guys, I got all their base paint on there and got them all done. But I think they're still too bright, right? So I'm gonna do a net. This is more advanced technique, but it's an easy one. I'm gonna do a wash on them, but I'm gonna do an oil wash, a oil, oil based wash instead of a water based wash, which so basically the shades and stuff Instead of all these are water, this is going to be an oil base. So with this, it, this is just a uh, tube of uh, raw umber. Just, just, just need a little bit, not a lot. Then you take some mineral spirits, little mineral spirits, put it in there, and a um, cheap paintbrush or mix up. This is what I do with most of my miniatures now for my final wash. Either this or black, depending, depending on what the miniature is and what's the best look for. Just mix it up. Say, so you, you just take your miniature and just lob, just cake the whole thing in it. There you go. So what it does, it dulls it down, makes it a little bit darker, it fills in everything. So if, if one little spot that you missed, you can see it, this will fill it all in. Plus it makes a uniform color of the whole thing, so it kind of binds the whole the whole, uh, the whole miniature together. So, but the, the thing about it, it does take longer to dry, but if it's like a nice day outside, nice warm day, you sit it outside, it'll dry within an hour. You know, the Because you just gotta wait till the oils come out of it. So, just do it with all of them. So you don't need to do this. It's just something I do. It does add does a lot more effect to it. Just a little bit more darker. It really brings out the highlights and stuff like that and fills in areas. So. But it does take some practice with if you want to use oils, uh, the consistency because you can make it too thin, too heavy. But even though if you get too much on there, you can always get rid of it with more mineral spirits. So if you get put it in an area that's too thick, take some mineral spirits with a clean brush, put it in there, and it'll just cl it'll clean it right up. So make sure everything's covered that so. Basically, that's it, and he, he's basically all done. He had a troll. So I'll, another day, I'll, I'll I'll do the base. And I'm, I'm going to do a swamp base for it. So that's going to be for another video. But for this video, I just need to let this dry. I'll, I'll wait to about a day. Then I'll put a sealer on it, which will 
bind it all down. And also with the oils, when the oils are crossed it, when that dries, also put a, a barrier on it too. So it'll help keep the paint out from chipping and everything like that. So, but that's it for now. Uh, that's three more miniatures down. A couple more to go. Once those are done, I'll just get another bag out and we'll start some more. So until later, guys, have a good night and keep on painting.